Hey guys, I am back with another video. This time we will be talking about an unknown supermodel named Danielle Luna. Some of you might have heard of her and some of you might not know her. When I first saw and heard of Danielle Luna, it was on Twitter and Carrie Hilson posted a picture of this beautiful African-American model on her page. I was stunned by her beauty and wanted to know more about her. The more I learned about her, the more fascinated I got. It is sad that Danielle Luna is forgotten in history, because this woman is a trailblazer for black supermodels in today's era. Disclaimer, I am not sure what is true or false in this video. I just find the information about a celebrity and make videos. This is not a biography channel, and it is just for entertainment purposes only. Please do not take any information from this video as factual. Thanks. Danielle Luna was born on August 31st, 1945 to working middle-class parents Nathaniel Freeman and Peggy Freeman. They both had three daughters, Danielle, Josephine, and Lillian. Nathaniel Freeman migrated from the South and worked in auto factories and worked for Ford Motors for 37 years. Later, he got promoted. Peggy Freeman was a receptionist at Young Women Christian Association. Peggy Freeman was a woman who had ambition. She wanted to climb the social ladder and better herself. This caused friction in their marriage because Nathaniel wanted a wife who would take care of his needs. Nathaniel was alcoholic, so she saw the worst side of him when he was drunk. Danielle's parents had a love and hate relationship. They had been married and divorced four times. Some say that Danielle's father was abusive to her mother. Late at night, the girls heard loud noises that woke them. They sneaked into the kitchen and saw their father shot dead on the floor. This incident caused Danielle into a state of shock. According to Peggy Freeman, her husband charged towards her and she thought that she was going to hit her. She saw it as self-defense when she shot him. Danielle Luna attended the prestigious Cass High School alongside Diana Ross, which she graduated a year later before Danielle. She was friends with Karen Miller and they both used each other nicknames. Karen noticed that Danielle was sweet and beautiful, but she was deeply troubled, like she was hiding a secret. They also were in plays together and they performed in Ford Auditorium and Wayne State University. Danielle Luna fell in love with theater and made it her mission to be an actress, even though her mother wanted her to be a nurse. Many theater directors never liked Luna's acting and considered her method acting to be dull. Even Karen stated that she ruined a play that she was in just by walking on stage. In high school, a lot of people had crushes on Danielle. Men and women were intimidated by her height and beauty. People who knew said she would make up stories about herself that weren't true. She has told people that she was born in Hawaii, but that was a lie. She will also tell people that her parents died in a car accident, which was also a lie. Her high school classmates described her as weird and that she lived in her own world. At this time, she was going through metamorphosis, creating a persona called Danielle Luna. She started to fix a lot of things about herself, such as fixing her gap teeth, and she also got rid of her blemish. She was first discovered by David McCabe while walking down the street in Detroit. He was so impressed by her beauty that he wanted her to come to New York and be a model. She was signed Harper Bazaar, and in 1965, she appeared on Harper Bazaar as the first black model. And this move skyrocketed her modeling career. During the 60s, racism was in fashion and Danielle Luna didn't fit into the mode. When she first appeared in Harper Bazaar, white Americans in the South were not too keen on having a woman of color in their magazine. She also experienced racism from designers and fashion photographers like Richard Avedon. She experienced racist language and behavior from designers, and they only hire Luna because they consider her as other. Richard Avedon was her manager, and he became very controlling of her. However, that did not stop her. She appeared in various magazines in the U.S. and all around the world. She modeled in Paris, London, Italy, and Germany. When she moved to Europe, she was accepted, but she was also a token for all black women. She was seen as exotic and a symbol of progression in the model industry in the 60s. Racialists would use language such as alien to describe Luna, it would also describe her as a Massa warrior, Gogwen-esque and Nefertiti reborn by Salvador Dali. It would also try to separate her from other black models because she is not what a black woman looks like because her facial features are alien. Her facial features are Eurocentric. Sick of the racism she experienced. She will lie about her racial background and tell people that she was white or that she is of Latin descent, often downplaying her African-American ancestry. She was discriminated against in Italy because they wouldn't serve her. She tried to explain to them that she was not black and that she was Polynesian, so they wouldn't serve her. She was also discriminated against in an apartment complex because they didn't like black people. Some people said that she was actually proud of her race and she loved her skin. She respected and knew the struggle of being black. In 1969, she was making 1,000 a week, which is equivalent to 7,000 in 2022. She also appeared in various movies produced by Annie Warhol and other European filmmakers. 
She also began dating famous celebrities such as Brian Jones, George Willing, Juan Fernandez, and Terrence Stamp. She also began to party hard. She will go to Studio 54 and parties hosted by Sammy Davis, JR, and Motown. She was also introduced to drugs when she came to New York. She never smoked or used drugs at all. However, that changed when she became famous and was influenced by her fellow companions. She found solace with drugs such as LSD, opioids, and heroin. She will often miss work according to Beverly Johnson and her marital relationship began to have problems. She never had a long-lasting relationship with her boyfriends. One of her boyfriends would abuse her. She was also dating Klaus Kinski and soon ended when he realized that she had a drug problem. She married an Italian photographer Luigi Casnega and they have a daughter named Dream Casnega. Dream was named after Martin Luther King's speech, I have a dream. Danielle Luna died of a heroin overdose in a clinic in Rome at age 33 and her daughter was only 18 months. Danielle was a trailblazer for women of color and fashion. It is sad that history has almost forgotten about her because she accomplished a lot in the 60s. Fun fact, there is a movie called Mahogany, which is based on Danielle's life. It stars Diana Ross, Billy D. William, and Anthony Perkins. She also stated that the movie Mahogany was about her life as a model, and she remembered pitching the idea at a film festival and Barry Gordy was there and took interest and made the film happen. The movie is good and shows the darker side of the modeling world and how it treats women of color. Zendaya paid tribute to Luma in Essence magazine. I am so inspired by her and I hope that women can be too. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks. Be back with another video and happy Black History Month.